Look at that. Show starts in five yeah. lives. Here we go. Hmm. in life.
Destined Live, episode 8, Infinity Time, right? We're going on and on and on and on and on, Clandestine Live, episode 8. How you feeling tonight? I'm grooving. Are you grooving? I'm grooving. We're moving to, look, I'm all rhyming and stuff tonight because it's 8. It goes in two circles and it's infinity, right? Just keeps it moving. Clandestine Live. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing good. You hauling some bass tonight? Yeah. Trying to hustle some bass, man. Just want to say, right? I'm here and I'm getting on. I'm going to make sure and share this show, Clandestine Live. Man, look at this. What's up, all my friends and family? Hope you're uh, watching. Hope you're tuning in to us. How you feeling over there, Crow? Good. Let's right get started. On. You guys Let's ready? Get started. Yeah. get right.
Island bees, man. Greetings. Listen here. A theory is a theory. Fact is relative to perception. Levels of perception, if you will. In a second, your theory is out the window, my friends. And what is your message, Earthlings? You better think twice. Study. Reflect. Examine. I do surmise. The world is anomalous. Clandestine Live. All right. How many times have I said that tonight, oh, right? No. How many not times are you gonna say that? Not enough. Yeah. Not future. enough. And view, like, like view, and share, share, like, like follow. Share. All right. Get that out oh of the man. way real quick. You know what? I've got to get out of the way or even give energy to. We're almost at ten thousand followers, 10, like 000, active, like yeah. organic Whoa. followers. We didn't pay for those. Really, yeah. they're no people GMO we know. Position. It's no GMO, man. But help us get to ten thousand, man. It's, like it's GMO. there. Follow, like, share, right? View, like, and share. Yeah. Right. Do it. Man, it's do been it. a good do week. It. Do it, do it. How you feeling? Look, we've got uh, us in the in the lights here, and again, I gotta get my ego out of the way. It's so big, you can't see the ladies back here. Can you see uh, Serene and Ash? All right, all right, we're in clear view. I just wanted to come in front. Here. Show, you know. Awesome, it's good to be here, though. <laughs> Sending out good energy, good feelings. We had a busy week. I know I did some stuff. David and I went to the uh, Phoenix Open, the Waste Management Phoenix Open. Right, that was a good yeah, time. Man, that was awesome, man. They're on the on the sixteenth hole. So oh if any yeah. of you know golf, man, that means that a good one? on I had a really good time <laughs> <laughs> watching golf. That's the bird's <laughs> nest, right? <laughs> Well, uh, we weren't the only ones busy too. What uh, Monday, Serene? You had an event, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna hand you the microphone. Yes, I have one right here. Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> We're set We're up. It. You had a dance and a, a healing event. Sound healing? Uh, no, not sound healing. Um, it's healing movement and dance. So I take um, the flow state and people getting into that dance and that flow, and I use Reiki and hypno hypnotherapy techniques to take them on a journey through transformation. Um, we did like lots of releasing and bringing in. Um, it was awesome. Yes, well, movement is, is amazing. It's yes. always- It was at Walk in Wellness. Right. Well, I watched, I tuned in. There was li somebody posting live, you know, and I was like doing stuff and I wanted to make it there s and I couldn't, but I, I looked it up. So I'm, I was happy that someone went live. And I know just movement alone like when we're jamming sometimes, uh, we'll video, and I in my head I'm thinking, man, I'm really moving. I'm just all over the place. And then you watch the video, and you're just barely moving. <laughs> yeah, you got to get into your movement. That's right. You'll have many opportunities, because I'm teaching that class every Monday, 8 mm -hmm. p.m. at Walk-In Wellness. And that's in Phoenix off of 16th Street, I believe? 16th Street in Camelback. Nice. Go mm -hmm. join... Uh, Serene Monday, I think Fabiola's helping out next Monday, yeah, right? Yeah, she is actually going to be subbing for me because I'll be out of town. So go hit up Fabi's class. It will be her first class at Walk-In Wellness. Nice. So, oh. yes. Well, we are like a variety show, right? Variety Online act. variety that's yeah. health and wellness, music. Oh, Des is like so. shred. It's not just face melting, shredding all the time, you know. No. There is some, you it's know, there's some the su time. substance Slow to down. it too. because. I know uh, you attended the event last night, right? That was the Purple Tent oh, event, Oh, Purple Ash? Tent event. Is that what it is? If you ever get a yeah, chance to go to a Purple Tent event hosted by Auric Medicine, you should definitely do it. Well, I know I was just a bystander here when you guys all came in and you all started talking about the event, and then it went on for like 20 minutes, and it was heavy, like just them greeting, and, oh, that event was awesome, and then again, I was like... Oh. Trying to be cool. Well, I, I watched you live for two seconds. You're like, no, you didn't get it. No, you didn't get it. You, right, you have to attend this thing, right? Yeah. Oh this yeah. type it's of thing, the right? It's the work, you know. I totally see what I said there. I feel right now is that um, that's what humanity needs to experience for us to change into this new world that we're going into. So if we get a chance to do some events like this, especially sponsored by Oric Medicine. I or, love uh, that you just on. said the work. That's like the most yeah. important thing is right. like, yeah, we're having fun and we're doing all of this stuff. But um, our event last night was um, it was revolved around self-love and a lot of self-love is work. Like there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of uh, stuff.
stuff that we've gone through throughout our lives and experiences that have like grasped onto us and we live from those stories and it's really time to like move on past those and do the work and figure out who you really are and figure out what you really believe and what your morals are and what your values are and what you are here to do um, based on what you want to do, not on what anyone else you know, tells you. So, yeah, the work is exactly. like so important. <laughs> um, well said, well said. Yeah, but well last night's event, uh, that was held at the Soul Center at 420 West Mahoney. Um, that's right. in Mesa. Um, beautiful, beautiful center, and uh, Renee and Carrie do a wonderful job. They're an up-and-coming wellness center that has a naturopathic doctor that's going to be uh, having a clinic there. Um, they have permaculture and everything, and we were able to utilize that space last night to do um, some healing circles, yoga, sound healing, um, and potluck around good food. So that was last night. It was hosted by all of the Oric Medicine Sisters, and it was just such a wonderful event. So everyone come on out to the next one. We'll uh, post it on our Facebook page. You I can know, tell us the <laughs> Facebook page now so we can find your class like Monday and then also so we can stay in touch with the Oric Medicine events and, and all the things. Yeah, so Oric Medicine, um, in case, I don't know if you can see how to spell it, but it's A-U-R-I-C Medicine, um, like your Oric field. and. Uh, that's how you can find us on Facebook and stay tuned with like a lot of our different um, events and whatnot. But um, on Walk In Wellness, you would be able to find all of uh, the classes that Serene, Fabiola, and any beautiful practitioners will be hosting. Nice. Well, very cool. And of, of course, we're always seeing these. And something amazing to me uh, with these events, I've been in the Valley a long time, and uh, it's really good to see people being so personable because you can go to a concert you can go to a fine dining event you can go to all these things and those are nice but it's good to see because when i tuned in and they i would just watched it for a little bit live and i said hello it was people interacting mm -hmm. like having some conversations there was people here and there and so it was really effective and effective to the human but affective to the community and with that we want to bring someone on we have a special guest john Linton, a good friend of ours, an acquaintance that's doing a lot, and he's definitely effective and affective to the community, to the people around him in a way of art, activism, and producing art as well. So give us a minute, and uh, we're going to show you a little uh, update of a future episode, too, that we're going to feature Ash, right? I'm going to say Ashes, right? Because we're going to do an episode called Flame to Fire coming up, and we have a preview showing that we're going to bring. And, and are you feeling good about that? Are we going to burn some stuff up this on is Probably film? like the most exciting, burn like, yeah, it's going to be good. It's going to be hot. <laughs> it's going to be hot. Check out the promo, <laughs> Flame to Fire. We're coming back with John Linton. Are we groovy? Management open, TCP. Thanks, thanks to Auction Community and Ultra Star. It's Ultra Star Sunday out here, isn't it? How you feeling? Fine, fine. Right on. Having a great time. Yeah, wonderful hosts, man. Uh, we're living in paradise right now, man. We're living it up in Arizona. The weather's beautiful. Right. So I'm bothering you while you're eating. Look, they had they had seared ahi, I think, man. Living it up. Yeah. Thanks for letting me bug you, man. Oh, no, anytime, anytime. <laughs> hey, we'll send you the bill. Send you the bill, <laughs> right? Send the invoice straight to the festival. Thanks, Phoenix Open, presented by Auction Community. 
our beautiful hosts, our wonderful hosts. Thank you, Anne Marie. Thank you, Akshin. Thank you, Ultra Star, for welcoming Dave and Ed I out to the Waste Management Open. People's Open. We got to see Mr. Mickelson take his shot on the 16th. Treated well, man. First class treatment. Clandestine live, man. Destin Live, we're back. How you feeling? Hey. Oh yeah, I'm gonna show off my shirt. I wore this because it's all shiny. And show, that, <laughs> show that shirt off. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that shirt. Look at that shirt. Is it the shirt I'm showing off? Tits? Is it? Those tits. Uh, you know, it's Warrior, man. It's it's back Halo. Already. <laughs> back already? Yeah. Back already. Clandestine Live. <laughs> See if I can get another sound bite like that. Clandestine Live. Right? I'm Gunner's breaking up. stuff. Oh, Dave's showing his shirt off. Look at this. Make Wait. art, not war. Got one too. All right, all right. Oh, yeah. yeah, there we go. Speaking of let's be better humans, John Linton's in the house. John Linton, what's up, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yeah, yeah and uh, I, we were talking about a mutual friend that kind of brought us together. It's his fault. We're all here in the room, right, Ashes? Like... It's kind of his fault, and we'll send that out to him. Hopefully, he's watching. He helps us so much. Andrew Young, All what's right, up? Andrew. Yeah, he's a young man. Where is Andrew? Man. Andrew. Shout out. Ow. Andrew Young, what's up, man? It's your fault. We're sitting in here, man. What's up? Never. He will never, never be Andrew old. Age is a state of mind. He's always Andrew Young. Check, check. <laughs> check your mic, John, so we can get some clear, clear <laughs> I'm not messages. used to a microphone, man. Is this good? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you can speak right into yeah, it. Kiss it. Just kiss it. Mm. You know, you yeah, you speak go. right That's into it. Just talk into it, just like that. You know? Just well, like that, Dave? Yeah, yep. Right on. I want to get right to it because he's got a lot of artwork and some messages that we want to share. John's a very cool dude in my book, man, way, and I'll just yeah. say that plain out. Uh, yeah. And I'm very grateful that he came out, and I'm happy that he's going to share his... Uh, expression through photography and uh, also the story that's connected to that photography so you'll be Pretty able to awesome. notice some of these images and yeah. kind of guide us into that you're doing a show right now right I am I am I am I am well uh, I think we'll talk about that show at the very end that's a lot of pressure man all this <laughs> stuff right here let's see if we don't mess it up oh yeah you yeah. just want to start with the bus then or we're live yeah <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna start with some of the photographs that I took and I'm gonna apologize for everyone that's already heard this story but it's probably worthy of a reiteration of course so <laughs> completely uh, in 2007 I decided uh, to use art as an instrument photographs to give a voice to the homeless uh, the photograph that just ran up on the screen not the one that says can I say it? Yeah. Say unfuck the world here. Yeah, this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's the podcast. Listen, man, man I've been <laughs> censored. At the art show that I'm at right now, they censored me. They took the bus away. Oh, oh and if they're watching, I'm really screwed. Right. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man. Well, they had know. to censor you. It's a public yeah. event, man. We're on a podcast. Yeah, so. that's true. Thank God for right? free speech. <laughs> yeah. um, but in 2007, I decided that I would have been in the art business a long time, uh, 20 years or so, which just makes me feel, well, there's gray in my beard then, so <laughs> I've been around a bit. Uh, but I decided to use art as an instrument to give a voice to the homeless. Uh, a friend of mine died on the street after a battle with heroin. And I thought that I would use photography then and some relationships that I have in the art business, leverage those relationships and create an exhibition in photography that would pay honor to his memory and at the same time then give a voice to those that are voiceless. 
Um, it's pretty awesome, brother. Like a lot of things that maybe we consider doing, I talked about it for a long time and didn't get into action. So I, I thought about it for maybe five years. And I was sitting in a studio with a friend of mine in Santa Fe, New Mexico, who's a painter. And I was going through this, you know, this conversation with him that he'd heard once too many times. One too many times, I should say. And he said, you know, John, I'm kind of tired of hearing you talk about this. Go do something. And I said, yeah, man, but, you know, I need, I'm <laughs> methodical. Yeah. I'm pragmatic. I need a plan. And he said, well, you're really none of those things. So just put a camera in your car <laughs> and, and go do something. So I, I put a camera in the car, and I thought if I happened across somebody that looked like they were, you know, on the street, that I would stop and have a conversation. But I was really very unnerved, man. I mean, how would I do this with dignity? How would I do it without the feeling of exploitation? How would I make that approach? And yeah, it's difficult, um, right? it was difficult, man. And interestingly enough, that approach that I made all those years ago is the same one that I use today. So, so let me ask you, so after five years, you, you were inspired by something really tragic, something deep. You know, I, I can experience or I can understand losing someone through, you know, uh, an addiction or an overdose and they're just not there. It's a mixture of feelings. So after five years and you started this, uh, did you find yourself feeling those feelings again, if you will, since you were inspired by that? You know, honestly, man, I can feel those feelings right now, all these years later. So sometimes I can get through these conversations without getting choked up, and then sometimes those emotions are still, you know, right there with me. And that's okay. I, uh, um, if that's what I'm feeling, man, that's what I'm feeling. But, uh, you know, this man that was a friend of mine, he, um, he was a father, you know, husband, a business owner, he was your next door neighbor, and uh, and he fell subject to you know the grips of addiction, and it and it can happen. It does happen to too many of yeah, us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what? He lost his life. You know what's interesting is on my last project, you know, I met this homeless guy. Yeah. At the establishment I go to, <laughs> and he came up and he was sitting there, and uh, he was and he got had a cup of water, and so anyway, I ended up hiring him you know, um, to help me weld on that last project, my last art project. That's cool. But he was, he was, he was totally un into that, you know. And there was times, man, it was pretty sad, man, where he couldn't even work, you know, unless he had that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And he's it still there. His, you know, his medicine, if you will. nothing I could do for the guy, you know, as right. far as, hey, man, you, you want to not do that? <laughs> he's like, yeah, almost like a fuck you. Well, <laughs> you no, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> but you know yeah, what you did, yeah. what you did for him, just in those when he was helping you weld. I mean, it yeah. was that was enough. Yeah. Right. For yeah, there was some now. moments. Uh, well, I, I specifically know some of the things Dave did and how he helped him. So there was definitely a quality of life for months, and he definitely won't forget. And his life's changed. So by you're what watching, did. Rick. You know, Which so I what's up, here. Rick? I know <laughs> you have a phone. What's up, man? He hung out with us. Oh Good yeah, guy, but like yeah. you said too, you know something uh, in the past. This isn't a new problem. I mean, heroin and opiates; these things aren't new. I mean, this has been around, right? And but now, just recently in the past year, there, it's getting press, and there's there's people noticing that hey, there's an epidemic going on. You know, but what my point is is. The superficial press isn't as important as these photos, man, because I really want to want you to guide us through. Like I saw the T-shirt, you know, unfuck the world. Everybody feels that right at some point we're living here and, and it's hard to get by. So tell me, I mean, w like you said, you had to approach these people and not exploit them yeah. or feel like I'm not exploiting you. And right away, I'm like, no way, John, you're like. If you didn't take that picture and show it to me, I wouldn't feel that. I wouldn't remember. And now you're doing a whole exhibition yeah. to people that are not necessarily, it's not convenient for them to see that, not because they don't want to. But well, th that was exactly it. Um, you know, and, and even the spirit of not, you know, when this friend of mine said, you know, you're not methodical, you're not pragmatic, you're, I am very kind of in the moment. So I didn't have any construct around I knew that I was going to do an exhibition, most likely. I didn't know what I was going to call the project. I just knew that I had to start taking photographs. So that first man that I approached, uh, 
I tried to do it with a measure of dignity and, and humanity. So I had mentioned to him that I was working on a project for people in need. I didn't want to use the word homeless. I thought that that was reinforcing something that was very negative and, uh, and didn't need to be reinforced. Often, you know, what I've noticed over the years then is that, that it's very dehumanizing to be on the street and yeah, people yeah, see through these individuals and, and they're very, you know, kind of dismissive. So I'd mentioned that I was working on a project for people in need and I didn't know if he felt like having a conversation, but if he did, I would be appreciative. And he said, I'm homeless, man, I'll talk to you. And as we started to talk, I realized that I hadn't properly introduced myself. And um, I said, forgive me, man, my name's John. You know, what is your name? And he started to cry. And he and see I can choke up now. Um, and you guys well, are hurt. That's, you guys are that's hurt. okay. Up that's by okay, this many man. Times, but no problem. Well, yeah. the thing too, the story's <laughs> never. Uh, you can tell it a million times, John. You can never yeah. apologize to me for telling the story because that's why I wanted to bring you here today. It's an important thing to be said. And as we, you know, we publish a, an episode of this, this will be on YouTube. We'll be able to refer to this, and people will see it. You know. Whether it's one, two, ten people, there's a story that's legit and, and relevant. And these photographs, like that gentleman in his hat, you know, you're describing a meeting, and I see it in his eyes. Yeah, you yeah. do. You know, you do. And, and and you see it in this man's eyes. Uh, yeah. When I asked that man his name then, and he began to weep, I knew what had happened. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm really dreadful with names, interestingly enough, but it's rare that I forget too many of the people that I photographed, and I photographed a bunch, but I'll never forget Chuck Ridgeway. And he had, uh, he had said, you have no idea how long it's been since somebody's cared to ask me who I am. We're like the walking invisible, you know, America's yeah, forgotten, exactly. the unwanted, the unwashed. Exactly, yep. And in that moment, the project, uh, it did take some shape. Um, in that instance, it, it became I Have a Name. And mm. so I began taking photographs, you know, um, um, you know, there was there was a you know kind of a long arc between the photographs and then that first exhibition. This is a lady named Sandra who, honestly, I've seen her far too many times over the last wow. several years. And uh, you know, there's no reason a 70 year old woman should be sitting on the street no, in this not country, especially That's true. you know. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. 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 Seems yeah. like a simple thing to say. You know, there's no reason for this to happen, but. It happens, and it's happening right now, and that's yeah. why these photos, your message, the bus, yeah. things we've done together, man, are, are extremely important, man. Really important. So, you know, this was one of the exhibitions that we oh had. Man, that's, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I didn't, I had 55 Facebook friends, <laughs> and that was by design, man. I had yeah. no use for social media. I didn't know what Twitter was. I thought it was, you know, kind of silly to measure yeah, our friends by too. the bushel and how many times they can clap the wings right man and <laughs> tweets i thought were better for like morning song than shit man right. i don't know but i had 55 facebook friends and uh, a friend of mine that's a uh, uh he's a doctor and a photographer and he had said hey put the put your photographs up on facebook and try to get some people to come down and see the exhibition and i remember telling chip i'm like hey man i don't know what 55 people are going to tell me you know, but, <laughs> and I don't know, and I don't, I don't even think I knew like 20 of those people. So, well, how many Facebook friends you got now? I mean, like um, you know, I think between all of the social media platforms, it, it might be close to 70,000, 80,000, something like that. <laughs> the project has become the biggest, most engaged uh, voice for the homeless. And, and I humbly can tell you, I'm, I'm encouraged by that. We've seen change affected, you know, not only within this community, but um, you know, really across the planet, even with the yeah. shirt, you know, yeah. like the shirt that I'm wearing after. Yeah. All right, okay. flash them again. Hey, yeah, 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 Let's be better humans. Go all the way down, uh, brother. You know. yeah. no, that's <laughs> probably enough, man. But, uh, <laughs> nobody wants to see a 53 year old guy, I promise you. But um, the, uh, the, the project really, it, it started to organically expand. One exhibition gave rise to another. You know, we did a we did an exhibition here in Phoenix. Uh, we did it uh, shortly after that. It was I was asked for an encore exhibition here in in, in Arizona as well. We we had uh, uh, an exhibition in Los Angeles, and there's been I think seven or eight at this point. 
Um, and that wasn't the extent of what we were doing. Then we started to do outreach on the street, out of my car. Well, I started to collaborate with other, you know, other organizations. Yeah. I know that uh, you being from Chicago and coming out to Arizona, it wasn't a direct trip straight from Illinois to Arizona. Um, reading your bio and seeing things, I know you've been doing a lot of work for a long time. You've been here for a couple decades doing yeah. art. You've helped people produce things. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, these photos, you know, I see you in the gallery there. And, and also you you mentioned being inspired by Ansel Adams. And, and what I'm thinking about is these large scale art pieces and photography shows and these huge gallery openings, right? A lot of times there's money being moved and there's a lot of attention being moved around. But, man, I've been there. I worked at... Uh, huge gallery in Scottsdale, Santa Fe. My brother actually is a painter in Santa Fe, so when you mentioned that, Joseph Sanchez. But what I'm impressed by is the fact that here's a project, and here's some art and some, some feelings. When you look at these photos, there's real feelings, but then it's more than just this guy with his camera. It's well, it, it's, it's about action. Man. It's way deeper than that, yeah. you know? The yeah. photo is like how many levels can you tell us about behind each one of these photos? You, you know, know it, 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 the whole thing has become rather, you know, kind of surreal, really. I mean, the, the exhibitions have, you know, been impactful. Um, um, and I didn't expect any of these things to necessarily happen. I uh, honestly, man, I thought after that first exhibition that was going to be the extent to which um, I gave back. I thought that would be, that would be it, um, and I thought really, frankly, that would be enough. That mm. that exhibition would be my contribution to giving people a voice, and you know, it just kept unfolding, man, <laughs> like layers and layers mm. and building, and and cool. you know, then the, the outreach on the street, and then uh, you know, a T-shirt that I designed. Uh, I bought fifty. When the social media component started to expand and get larger, I think when it got to about 50,000, I thought, well, I'm going to see if people will do more than just like and share and press a button and, you know, let's activate people and motivate people to, uh, to really get involved in a, in a more meaningful way. And I, I was using the hashtag Let's Be Better Humans for a number of years, and then I decided that I would design a T-shirt with that message and see if people would, would wear that message. And if that might inspire people to, uh, you know, we're all doing this thing called life and doing it yeah. together, man. Yeah, so real, man. I bought 50 shirts and I thought, I'll see if people, we'll you know, will wear the message. But honestly, Dave, you know, it's strange, man, because the most ridiculous of things, the most ridiculous things kind of go viral. And then the most well-intended things just fall flat. So yeah. I thought, I'll buy 50 shirts. People buy the shirts. Wonderful. Well... <laughs> We'll do a, a meal for some homeless vets in Phoenix, and if they don't, I'll have 50 Christmas presents, man, and yeah, for friends. Go. And really, we sold T-shirts from Peoria, Arizona, to Paris, France, and all points between. Yeah, nice, and man. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, awesome. literally thousands well, and thousands <laughs> of shirts, man. Being an observer of the world and having started a nonprofit some years ago, I can say, John, I believe the community and the people, myself, the world has grown into understanding that shirt we're in a time where we can see a lot of negative but ultimately the people that i talk to and shake hands with from all walks of life are looking for balance so that t-shirt's relevant and we've walked into and grown to where we can accept this message that you're giving us yep, for real most of us well, <laughs> no. I'm speaking for yes, for yeah, for I the mean, positive, you know, yeah. because I've watched yeah. some of your your trials and tribulations, you know, but that's some of what we're doing, you know, and we want to show some of the continued things that we're we're planning on, and I believe that uh, I'm one that mixes the, mixes the two, right? And you you are you you've poured a lot of ingredients into a stew, and I've watched you. Uh, have to talk to the police yeah. when you're just trying to simply help people, right? Yeah, that's bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it was amazing to me, and I got really um, looking at my social media, and I'm like, man, 
what do we do? What lawyer? Who do I call? And and mm. we'll have to talk about that more because yeah. we need to bring that to light. You know, it yeah. should not be illegal to help uh, needy people on the street. Literally, oh, okay, uh, it's literally. wrong for me to go give them a sandwich and some supplies. Okay. I understand you're doing your job, but maybe you should question that job sometimes when it's ridiculous, right? When it's completely ridiculous. I don't know when compassion becomes a crime, man, but... (laughs) Well, it has, so... That was weird. But with that, this show is part of me wanting to discuss those gray areas and try to shine light on, hey, we don't have to be that way, and there's reasons sometimes those things happen more than we can understand. Sometimes I've been angry at leaders and and so forth, and then ask, after I talked to them and seen things, maybe there was a solution, but like you said, sometimes there's not. We just hit a brick wall. So then we send the fire dancers out, right? And we send <laughs> we send sound healing. And we do a li- live online podcast yeah, that we go. play music and have comedy and remind people we're human, man. Yeah. So with that, we have some cool things that Alan put together, some previews. We're going to be at Ultra Star talking about love next week. Right? We're going to be doing a lot of things. So let's roll a, a preview video of some of the things we're coming up with. And uh, we'll be right back. Right? Clandestine Live with John Linton. We'll see some more of those pictures, John. Ah, for sure. Yeah.
Justin live, and we're live through outer space, right into your house or to your phone in your hand. How you feeling tonight? Are like you feeling and share. good? Like and share. I'm feeling clandestine live <laughs> right now, John. I'm feeling pretty live. Right on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what's weird, man? <laughs> eight, right? You were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Eight, and today is it's day the eighth, right? Episode eight. eight. On the eight. That's why I said it's my favorite number, man. I've got eight tattooed right there on my arm. Fabiola. Yeah. It's a great day. All planned. Infinite, you know? Infinite relationships and infinite energy. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of that, Econo Anthony, his daughter and my son and our other niece are all born. Eight years apart. Oh wow! Oh. Yeah. See, on the same day. Wow. What? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> same day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. yeah, Dang! So I'm gonna oh, give them wow. money for lottery tickets. <laughs> no kidding. On the eighth, <laughs> on the eighth month, right? On the eighth eight, month, eight, on the eighth eight, day eight. of the eighth year. Wow. Man. All right, I, I I'm freaking out. Now. Yeah, November. Right. Yeah, yeah, November. It Crow, did you hear that, man? I heard that. Yeah. Well, Be numerology. Great. It also works with oh. networking and <laughs> stuff. Uh, it's funny with business and medicine. I keep men mentioning on the show, you know, when I read about ancestor, my ancestors or my people, the Lakota people, they would talk about how medicine, science, arts, uh, just the mastery of life, none of those things were separate, right? Of course, you had your experts, if you will. But if you, if you separate those things, you start running into confusion because within arts, there's answers to medicine. Within medicine, there's answers to art. Within you know, science, obviously, you need mathematics to create art. You need, you know, so all these things being connected, yeah. right? And us meeting, I met you at Pioneer Park in Mesa, Arizona, yeah. right? At yeah. the Mesa Pow Wow. And I know a lot of people came out of that event uh, with a different outlook on how they were going to treat their community, how they were going to approach things. I know personal people, friends of mine that went, uh, listened to you speak, listened to some of our friends, Andrew, and I facilitated a lot of people that came and gave a lot of time. And from that, like this year, how many to we were able to give away a bunch of toys, you know, and John was, man so cool for him and he brought the bus over and There's we loaded some of those photographs in here man. Yeah, yeah thousands of toys you know and i know we have a, a cool exhibition you know that that is kind of brought uh, out of what you've done you're going to be working with the arizona historical society correct yeah yeah um well you know what here we're talking about art man I all mean, right this is this is important this is a photograph of a piece of art that we dedicated back to the city and the, and the nation at large and there's a little boy, and he's pouring uh, really love out into the world, man. And, and there's a quote that's underneath this. It's a quote from Mother Teresa. I published a book, you know, when I did the first uh, exhibition years ago. And on the first page, this quote was there. And it says, at the end of life, we'll not be judged by how many diplomas we've received, how much money we've made, how many great things we've done will be judged by. I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was hungry. I was homeless, and you took me in. That's um, awesome, man. What was really yeah. interesting, man. I mean, this was a beautiful piece of art. This is on an iconic building where I did an art exhibition. You know, the I Have a Name project for the the photos. But you can see here, this is a plaque that's on the wall. It's an honor and remembrance of those who've perished homeless on our streets. Um, Instagram was recently in town. We were doing some work with One in Ten, which is an organization that provides help and resources for at-risk teens and homeless youth that are from the LGBT community. We did an art uh, workshop with those kids and, and, um, and showcased it during Art Detour last year. And when Instagram was here, they had shared with me that that particular piece of public art is the most highly viewed and photographed piece of public art on Instagram here in Phoenix, which is really nice. cool. Yeah, awesome. So, <laughs> um, so it, you know, it's uh, it art. When we're talking about art, man, and and things that are interconnected, it it you can use art as a way to create social discourse, and that's really what I've yeah. what I've done, what I've tried to do, again, yeah. in a, in a you know, with to the best of my abilities. Um, yeah. 
So we well, we've in a used really good way though. I mean, yeah, um, you know, it's it's <laughs> been it's been interesting. Yeah. But I didn't expect you know that. Uh, n none of this was planned for. It just it it just happened. Um, so we've you know we've used art there. The bus is a rolling piece of art. If if we can pull up some of those photographs, we can show. Yeah, here's the bus and. And many of you were, you know, were there like the f right when it happened, right? Yeah. Yes, you. I know it was a yellow bus, man. A s <laughs> I don't even know how really. Like, Let's be better humans. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that bus, man. I love. I mean, you guys have yeah. all been on it, and I love all of everyone here, man. You guys. I mean, this is good people. I'm tired as hell. I've been pulled at, at both ends of, you know, <coughs> for many, many Can months. And candles it's nice lit on, yeah, candles lit on both ends. Totally, yeah. Dave. But it's, you know, <laughs> to come and share some time with you guys, uh, you know, you'd have, I'd have to be, you know, just asleep not to come here. So <laughs> I, I love you guys. I mean, I say that yeah, sincerely. Likewise. But, Much love, yeah. and, you know, last, last, just this last Christmas, you guys, and this is another piece of art we did in the city. Uh, it's right off the light rail uh, with a Let's Be Better Humans message, and my friend Andy Brown, you know, he, he painted that for us. So uh, that's just a reminder, and this is one of the shirts, and Juliet, man, I mean, she was kind enough to wear that shirt and model it for us. So we've, we've tried to do some things here. Um, th this is, you know, fast-forwarding a little bit, but when you'd mentioned the Arizona Historical Society, they called me last month, and they said that they wanted... And I thought this was a really bold initiative on their end, and I applaud them for having the courage to showcase the exhibition of photography for I Have a Name. Uh, they're going to hang that on November of 2018. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, uh, there you go. Just keep it there the rest of the night, man. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So we're Unfuck Trump. Yeah. Yeah. Right, yeah. man. Is it, wouldn't that Maybe be you nice? should just tuck Frump. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but the the Arizona Histor Historical Society is going to bring the I Have a Name exhibition to their museum uh, in Scottsdale and Tempe, and they're going to hang it for six months, which is really really cool. And I asked them if I could take some of the photography that's currently there out and and uh, keep it current, really, and, and so that I would feel completely engaged. And they asked me what I had in mind, and I said, you know, there's 1.5 million youth in this country that are uh, living on the street, you know? And I'd like to include that in the photography and give a voice to, you know, our kids that are living out there. And, and after working with, with One in Ten, that group that provides resources for at-risk teens, and the LGBT community, I learned, you know, if you stick around something long enough, you become hopefully somewhat educated. And the sad part that I became aware of is that 40% of the kids that are out on the street are there because of who they decide to love, you know, and, and then they come yeah. out to their parents and then, they're, and then it's, it's difficult for them to stay in their homes and they take refuge on the street and the street is no place for kids. I mean, to that point, that mural that we showed you earlier in part the reason that that was painted is that and this is a poignant story to the whole project um, a few years ago when we were getting this one when we were getting ready to showcase an exhibition and I wonder if I can even put together a salient point tonight it'll I'm be surprised you. but so. when we did this exhibition in this building this wall was just becoming available for a public piece of art I had a message on Facebook from a mother and it said my daughter has a name and now she's gone. And I had no idea what that might mean. And I, I, I was hopeful that it didn't mean what, what I felt it might mm -hmm. suggest. So I reached out to this mother through Facebook and we started to have a conversation and I would learn that her daughter left home in Reno, Nevada with a boy and they thought it might be interesting to live on the street like gypsies and play music and uh, and 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 the reality is, is that the street's a dangerous place, and it's a very dangerous place for anyone, but specifically uh, young women. And this little girl lost, uh, I think, ma'am, it's her birthday tomorrow. Fuck. Mm. I don't know how old she would have been. I think now it might she she lost her life 
three weeks, be three weeks before her 19th birthday. I believe that's what it was, somewhere real close to that. Um, the mother shared that story with me, and if that wasn't heart-wrenching enough, uh, the family didn't have enough money. They were like a lot of Americans today, the working poor, and they didn't have enough money. I don't know if I've ever told you this story, man. Um, they didn't have enough money to get the little girl's body out of the morgue. Dang. Yeah. So when you talk about, you know, when I think about it, the disdain that I had for social media and then the, the, the way it can be utilized for, you know, wonderful things, we used that social media platform and we raised $3,400 in a couple of weeks and we sent that uh, up to her mom uh, to get that little girl home. Um, for that's a better human thing to yeah. do, yeah. John. That's I don't know. Actually. That's what I go we do, man. <laughs> I, uh, no, that I think, you know, you know wow. something that uh, is needing to be brought up to or that I'm aware of is, you know, this story, and I saw where you, you sometimes you're reluctant to retell a story. We've heard it before. Or, but what I've seen is that uh, the people we think are ignorant to this sometimes are not ignorant to it on purpose, right? And so we have to tell them the level of despair that is there if they're not there. And what I'm saying is, uh, you know, I read stories about uh, different homeless girls and young men like this, and, and it's tragic, right? But someone who's in a place of comfort and has everything they need and they're, they're working hard, they felt like they earned their way there, sometimes those people don't realize, man, uh, not everybody gets a college fund. Most people don't get a college fund. Most people don't have a savings account. And a lot of times the ignorant people that say, you know, like the Bruce Hornsby song, you know, just get a job. Oh yeah, right. Those people that say that maybe they don't really, they really don't understand because they stepped out of their folks home perhaps with 10 grand. They think everybody has 10 grand. Well, you know, no. Sometimes it's not like that. Sometimes you don't have a home. Sometimes even your parents, through whatever facet, lose their home, right? Uh, other stories, and my point is that we as humans, specifically Americans, United States citizens, I'll specifically say that because America is North American. Mexicans are American, FYI. Canadians are American. We are U.S. citizens. And as U.S. citizens, a lot of times we're, we've been conditioned to judge. If I see a person there, I do have to walk through this little bit of a judgment before I'm like, all right, I'm going to help them. And it's through stories like this where I hear about like maybe a teenage girl that's homeless. And how are you going to finish school? How are you going to think about college or writing a grant or having a goal if you can't even get a sandwich? Yeah, you know, it's it, 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 when you bring it back to that, um, you know, the first of all, the, the you know this this whole an effort was an opportunity to try to get people just to pause, man, and to look at something that they don't often want to look at, you know. When and I, I'm, I was guilty of it as well, you know, um, sitting at a stoplight and you see a guy holding a sign and it's you know easier to look at your phone, you know, than to look at him or to look at her. And you know what's interesting, man, in talking to the people that I've had uh, really the great privilege to speak to, they're aware of that, you know, they're aware of that, you know, that people look through me or look past me or look beyond me and they don't feel like human beings and. And when you're talking about, you know, Canadians being Americans and, and those in the United States being Americans and, and individuals in Mexico being Americans, you know, and really what resonated to me, you know, we're all people, yeah. you know, we're all, we're all from the human race. I know it was, right? man, that we're all from the human race and we're all doing this, you know, I think I referenced it earlier, we're all doing this thing called life and we should probably learn how to, you know, it, it's, it, it, it's sad that we have to, you know, th that we should have to, think about being better people but the world has become a bit noisy you know and Very. and when I shared with you earlier you know what that gentleman said in that lodge all those years ago you know that you know right. it's about this attachment to time and 
and that we're all in this big hurry, man. And in so doing, I mean, we get sick from that, yeah. right? Yeah. And that sometimes it's okay, and we should just, you know, take a pause and look around. Yeah, and take and it's about love, right? Take it a is. smoke it's break. A, it's love. Know? Yeah, exactly. Take a smoke break. Take yeah. a smoke break, man. <laughs> Figuratively <laughs> and liger- literally, man. Right. I don't know. The the thing is, too, the like you're saying, uh, I guess my point, too, with talking about the the one uh, and I'll just say the ignorant ones the person that will tell the person on the street to just simply get a job uh, the uninformed I've, right I, well I've know? come to understand or trying to in my life realize well if I'm trying to be a good person and if I have opinions about what the economy should be or what politics there should be the last thing I should do is say all right well fuck Trump because then I'm an asshole too. <laughs> yep, pretty much. You know what I mean? And no matter how horrible something is, I'm sorry, but I turn the lights on. As soon as I get up in the morning and if I turn lights on, I'm part of this economy. And what my point is, is I've brought myself out of my own anger or distaste and despair of what our system is by going, you know, I have to take a seat at that table. And if I don't talk to him, then why should he talk to me? And if I'm going to judge the next guy, and instead of informing him, that lady or that dude in that Mercedes with a $700 purse living in a house that could fit 17 people, yeah. she doesn't know, maybe. She really doesn't know because she didn't feel it. Maybe she read it. You know, I think it's about... Really, for me, it's and uh, for all of us. I'm sure it. I don't, and you don't really in in a room full of people like that are here, man. I mean, all of us know that <laughs> an empathetic heart is, you know, the most important thing, and listening with an empathetic heart, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, for real. That's it. Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah. So. Man, I, I I'm touched that you were here, yeah. and I look forward to doing more work with you, John, and. Yeah. You know, we mentioned the toys, and I and I brought you here specifically because I wanted to tell you we're we're going to be working with some more donations. We have a lot more things besides just toys that we're going to need to help process and give out to people. And uh, you're the right person to help us choose the right people. And so throughout the year, you know, as holidays come, we're going to be able to give out more than just toys. But again, we're about fun. We're about entertainment, music. Yeah, so well toys are always going to be there. Yeah. You know? <laughs> well, speaking of that, man, I was homeless once. I was 12 years old when I ran away from home. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not. I heard the story. <laughs> Look, he's getting off. I Actually, that's sto- one of those stories, Dave, <laughs> talks about standing on the highway, right? North American highway. North American highway. Yeah. Looking out there going, wow. And just to There's long no story road. short, we'll have to get back to that. But I remember it, you, that story helped me realize that this country was mine. Because you talked about being away from home, walking on the highway, realizing, wow, no matter where I go in this country, North America, South America, East America, West America, right, Toledo, Los Angeles, I'm native, I'm, I'm First Nations person, I'm American, or I'm a citizen, or like us today. This whole country is like ours. It literally is. It's, it's ours. All ours. Right? And it's, it's ours to do what we want with. Whatever right? we want. Whatever we want. And you're doing it, man. You're doing stuff that people just dream about. Talk. Oh, someday I'm going to help people. You're freaking doing it, John. Nah, you know. Right? <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah. I couldn't do it without a lot of help, though. It's not just me, man. I mean, you guys have been helpful, all of you guys. Right on. Right? Well, much love, man, and, and uh, there's a lot of other things. Reach out in your community. Help people, man. We have things going on. Right. We have a fundraiser that we're planning for my nephew. Yep. Christmas is all year. Right? Christmas should be every day if that's your holiday. So, Clandestine Live, much ha- love. Let's roll that video. Day. Help us out. We're going to be announcing some dates and some times and how you can help us help Stacy. So next week, Bob Candelaria will be here. I promise, man. I paid his travel here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sorry, he was supposed to be here this week, last week, last the week, week, the week before, before, the first we week, second him, week. You know, we tagged him. So to get a hold of him. Yeah, He's always here. We love you. Limo going to go pick him. Pick I'll his go get him, man. Yeah.
clandestine <laughs> life. You could come with yes. me, Dave. Yeah, yeah. Clandestine you life. You can have a smoke. December 31st, 2017, Stacy T. Candelaria was tragically struck by a train in Flagstaff, Arizona. With severe life-threatening injuries, Stacy was rushed to the hospital. As family and friends begin to hear of this terrible tragedy, they communicated on social media. Expressing gratitude for the life of his son, Robert Candelaria makes this heartfelt plea on Facebook. Family and friends gather in prayer to support Stacy's recovery. After eight hours of intensive surgery, Doctors have high hopes for Stacy's full recovery. Stacy is in good spirits and has a positive outlook. His road to recovery is going to be a long one and he needs our help. Let's help make Stacy's recovery be a comfortable one. In the weeks to come, please look out for fundraising efforts and events that you can be a part of. Stacy's family and friends are pulling together to create a wonderful event and we want you to be a part of it. Let's keep Stacy smiling as we help him with everyday things such as transportation, grocery shopping, doctor's visits, and maintaining a quality of life. Help us keep that smile on Stacy. Find out how you can be a part of this fundraising effort. Hi, we're back. We're going to share with you a song that Dave penned some years ago called Nobody There. It's about dimensional travel. It's about intellect. It's about what your psyche and your mind and heart can do if you're willing to open it. Just a groove. I was walking down the street trying to make this day complete when I came upon a man you know he said he was a friend. So I asked him when and where, and he said he didn't care. That all he really wanted was a picture, that's right, a picture there and there. Well, we got his name, and he struggled to rephrase. hesitation as he made his presentation and he told me of stories you know of days past glory 
Made me want to sing and shout, yeah, and dance all about As we drove from here to there, you know, with really, really no cares Was a little perplexed, yeah, at what happened next, you know For where he had been sitting, there was nobody, nobody there But I heard him say, fly, fly, fly like an eagle up to you, up to the sky, to the sky, you will see the light of tomorrow. And know, yeah, and know the right path, the right path for you. Yeah, what about me? Now, how about them? Come on now. And what about those? Oh, yeah. Woo! Now, how about him? And what about her? Oh, my God. What about you? And what about me again? Now, how about us together? That's right, together. All right, here we go. Take us home, Dad. A little bit of reggae tongue. Make sure we don't rehearse anything. <laughs> right? no. we well, I was like, I, I don't know, man. Well, I didn't even realize we were playing a song till like <laughs> half, halfway into the verse. I was Always like ready that. to song, and I was like, <laughs> we don't. My bass anything. isn't even on. I gotta like get a bass <laughs> on, and like I'm supposed bass? to be playing a bass line. Right <laughs> like, what's missing? Uh, I'm just thinking yeah. about your lyrics. I know. Uh, These uh, lyrics are. Cool. I was like, man. I just want man, people to know what they're about. Oh. Let's Come see our show for uh, $80 yeah. a ticket. Yeah, we're yeah. doing great. Yeah, yeah right. Well, no, I'll well, just, I just didn't know. Technically, this is a rehearsal. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's the first time we rehearsed that song in like a month. I know. Well, I, month. I wanted to use this song, though, yeah, to set up, talk about this song. Set up <laughs> uh, the content, I guess. And that's what I was thinking about, you know, because we mentioned the Purple Tent event, right? We mentioned your, your movement healing. We've talked about healing. We've talked about health and wellness. And sound healing is important. There's music therapy. There's all type of things. And, and I'm going to keep saying these tag words over and over because not everyone's as familiar with them as I am or as we are in this room. When you hear the words sound healing, not, not everybody way. has the same picture. But we want to give the proper picture as we go. So we're going to be introducing a lot of experts, clinicians. right? How are, and I know Ashes and, and Serene can help us understand, I guess, what it is we're doing when we're playing Nobody There. Because tell us, Dave, it's a little dimensional. There's dimensional thoughts in there, you know, dreams. Yeah. Well, for sure, man. You know, there. all of us had an experience to some degree, you know, the, the that essence of things where all of a sudden you're scratching your head going, what? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've, I guess that's pretty much what that song is, you know, just wondering what it, how that would happen or when that happened, you know, that you see somebody there and then all of a sudden there's nobody there and yet they shared with you. <laughs> and that's that's kind of wild, I guess, in a way. But definitely that's... I really enjoy that song. Sorry we messed it up or I messed it up or whatever happened. <laughs> I don't know. It made me feel good. So there was some healing qualities going on. But Speaking yeah. of nobody there, I hope somebody's there, right? We're going to end our episode there? eight. Is anyone there? Is, is anyone anybody? There? Are you going to be there for I'll me, girl? Remember to like uh, and share. Are no you going to be else? there is next there week? No is, there, is there no is there one else? Is there no one out there? Next week, we're going to be on Wednesday. Room. Sorry, Ashes. Oh, that's right. Right? I we're going to be on location. Off. We're going to be on vacation? No. Over at Ultra location. Star. Ultra Star. On Ultra location. Star Multitainment Center. You know, we're going to be in the lobby hanging out and doing their uh, virtual, virtual reality. reality. That's the location of it's our It's virtual vacation. Valentine's Day at Ultra that's Star right. next week. Sorry, I got, I got carried away there. Wait, Sorry. Wait, instead yeah. of Ultra Thursday, Star. it's on Wednesday. It's on Wednesday. It's Wednesday night. Wednesday. Yes. We're going to be live Ultra from Star. Ultra Star. Bring Star. Different best gal. Entertainment. Ultra Star. I mean, yeah, I mean, your only gal. Bring your own gal. Bring your best guy or your best, best guy. whatever. <laughs> yeah. Just come on all out. The, We're going to be watching oh, dinner. Be best, whatever. I don't know. They have a promotion. <laughs> they have a really good promotion. Look it up on our site. It's dinner and a movie. It's karaoke. And... uh 
I don't see anywhere else with that good of a price as well. And nowhere else can you hang out with Beefcakes, David A. Montour. Yeah, it really is. All right, <laughs> next win- Wednesday, February 14th. <laughs> yeah, I'm going The vegan, vegan virtual reality so Vanta- I, Valentine I can't show? Be, I the can't be Beefcakes. I'm going to have to die. I ain't being cupcakes. Though. He's Beefcakes. No <laughs> <laughs> Beefcakes. No. love you. No, Thanks for watching yeah. Clandestine Live. <laughs> Tune in next All Wednesday. Right. We'll be live from Ultra Star. Brown Sugar V Cake's going to be here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. tonight. Let's go live. interviews with Thank clandestine you. live <laughs> how are you feeling tonight uh warmer now warmer now i'm feeling the body heat all around it's nice and cozy <laughs> in the holiday spirit <laughs> <laughs>